everyone, welcome back to 3D CAD Master. So today, as you can see from what I've already drawn, more of as a template for me just to see which ones I'm getting to. This is our intro to 3D CAD Masters. It's what our professors teach in a student's free two hour trial session. Um, not only do we teach 3D design, we also teach the kids about the basics of a 3D printer. So how this works, the X, Y, and Z plane, just all those basics, right? And then we also teach them a little bit about circuits and coding as well um, using Arduino Uno. And we kind of mix it all in just to see if your student is more interested in learning 3D CAD or if they're more interested in learning Arduino. Um, and we do teach both, but we can also teach just one subject as well. So let's jump right in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to block that out because we've already seen that. And if we need to reference it, we just look at it again. But I'm just going to block this out. Um, so what we're going to start off with is the sphere. Like I said, the sphere, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to use this ellipses tool. As you can see, I've been using it. And this right here, so normally whenever it comes out, it'll come out just like so it'll come out sort of like this that's this is how you're going to first see it if you click on it for the first time so this button right here with the two arrows pointing at each other will widen it and lengthen the ellipses and then the button on the left is going to scale it so we want to get the ellipses to be 90 degrees there we go and now we can just put it in this top left corner and that looks a little off for some reason. I think I went too fast. Patience is a virtue. And there you have it. You have your sphere and there's not much to it because you don't have all these hidden lines that you can draw to really make it pop, right? That's going to come in with more the shading aspect, right? Which is what we're not doing that today. We're just simply drawing it. So then let's go ahead, move into this ellipsoid. Weird name, all you have to do is scale it down a bit, large it up, bam. Now you've got an ellipsoid. Crazy how it works, right? So now we're gonna move in to the hemisphere. So of course, now that you've done the ellipses or the ellipsoid in 3D, I guess, and you've done the sphere, now you can move on to the hemisphere. And how are we gonna do that? Because Obviously, since it's 3D, you can't just draw a circle and then cut it in half, even though that's a hemi-circle, right? But it's 2D, so we want to put it in 3D. So how are we going to do that? Well, like I said from earlier, we're going to use those two concepts and we're going to apply them. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to, oh, wow, you're going to draw. Mm, I would say, is this about 80% of the circle? Maybe 70 Right? You're going to draw about 80% of it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to lengthen this ellipses and you're going to scale it down. Because as you can see right here, this is an ellipses with a half circle. You're going to scale it down and you're going to place it right where you want it. You can make it longer, scale it down a little more. All right? You can do what you want but it's just all about that concept that you understand that you can take an ellipses and you can take a circle template, really, a circle template, I guess. Don't know why it keeps doing that. There we go. I'm done. Um, so now you've got your hemisphere, right? So let's go ahead and erase these lines that we don't need. Make our eraser a little bit bigger. Erase these lines. I'm gonna get it as close to the shape as possible, but it's not perfect. It's fine, it's your first session, right? It's just your intro session. You can get it perfect. You can practice it at home. You can do what you want with it here. And then in class, perfect it. Impress the professors, right? All right, so we're gonna skip this Taurus just because I'm not even sure what it is. 
we're never going to have to apply that anywhere. It's grayed out. It's probably not even a real shape. I'm just kidding. It is a real shape, but we're not ever going to use it in 3D CAD. So we're just going to void it out, right? So now let's move into this cylinder. Now the cylinder is interesting. Why? Because it adds another element. See, you can see these shapes as really our level. The sphere was level one, the ellipses, ellipsoid was level two, the hemisphere was level three, and now we're on level four of the cylinder where we now add lines to two ellipses, right? If you didn't get that before, now you got it. So we're just going to take our ellipses once again. We're just going to rotate it to 270 degrees, size it down just a tad so that it's not too big. I don't think I really size that down any. Huh. I'm just going to go like this if this darn thing would stop being stubborn with me. I'm not just doing that. Okay, it's not what I wanted at all. Okay, so what we do. We're gonna do half of it over here. Okay, that didn't work either. Half of it over here, half of it over here, connect them. Oh, see what I'm doing? If something doesn't work out, do it again. So I'm going to take this out for a second, but I'm going to keep it as it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag two lines down from either side of the ellipses. And you can do it the opposite way too by drawing two lines first and then connecting the ellipses. But I figured we already have the ellipses tool open, so why not use it, All right? And I'm just going to go in here. And this part, we're not going to have that line problem again, which was weird. Um, because here's what we do for hidden lines. Ooh, y'all are going to think this is fun because we get to apply another color to it. If you can guess what color I'm thinking, you are going to be a great 3D CAD master. I'm going to use a light gray just to show that it's not black, right? But it's not some weird red that just pops out, you know? And then once again, I'm going to go back in and we're going to adjust these lines, leave them, we don't need them. They are a distraction to the eyes of our beautiful cylinder. And there we have it, our cylinder, level four, done. So now what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna add another element to the cone. What element are we gonna add, might you ask? We're just gonna add the lines again. But this time, um, the lines are going to be diagonal. So what I like to do is that is way too diagonal. That's like a 45 degree angle. I'm going to do about 65 degrees. I'm going to do it right about here. And I'm going to kind of overdo it a bit um, just because it's a lot easier to go back in later and erase everything than it is to try and go over the same line again, right? So let's go ahead and get our ellipses tool out. And just going to apply it nicely. This one has no hidden lines. Thank goodness. I'm not sure why it keeps doing that, but we're just gonna do it like that because that works, right? You do what works. Don't try and force something that doesn't work, right? Because if you're trying to force it, it's probably not right. That's a life lesson for you. I'm not qualified for life lessons, but if you have to force it too much, you should find another way to fix it, or it's probably not how you should be fixing it, right? So now we've got our cone after erasing all those unnecessary lines, and look at that. We've passed. Um, so let's go ahead and move into more of the prism pyramid area of shapes. Okay, so what we're going to be working on today, and really, uh, we're going to go ahead and cross out this pyramid, cross out this octahedron, because later you'll see it's really just a repeat of this pyramid. Um, cross out this cuboid, and of course, these two are out. They're out. Like, don't bring this up, <laughs> because we I'm not going to use them. Um, but this pentagonal prism and this hexagonal prism kind of have the same concept to it. It's just adding that one more side. But there is an easier way to do that other side, which I'm going to show you. Just fun. Um, 
So let's go ahead and get started on the tetrahedron, which has the same concept again as the pyramid. Um, it just adds another, uh, it's, it's triangle base instead of a square base, right? So let's go ahead and get started with that. So what we're going to do first is you can see there's a straight line going down here, and we're just going to do a straight line. Easy as pie. Um, get this 65 degree angle working again. This one's going to be pretty skinny. Um, just because I like working with 65, it's not too big, it's not too small, it's just right, you know? So. Switch it over, get that 65 degree angle working again. And there we go, there we have it. Um, the next thing you want to do is go in with a gray. And I'm going to draw it up just a bit. And that's our hidden line. Okay, then we're going to go in with the black and we're going to go over this line. And you can always start with um, the gray line. I can also show you how to do that as well. Um, but I kind of like seeing the big picture first and then going in and filling it in a bit. Even though I did say I don't really like filling things in, but I am. People change their minds, right? <laughs> this is gonna be an awfully big triangle, but it's okay. And we're just gonna line it up a bit like that. There we go. And now we're going to go back in and erase it. Let's just um, this one's just gonna have a, a square pyramid, right? Like we talked about. Um, so what I am gonna do for this one is I'm going to start off with our two baselines, which is a square, and then we've got the hidden line square in the back, right? And then I'm going to connect, I don't want to make it too big, I'm going to connect these two with an angle of 40 degrees, let's do 40. If it'll, there we go. It was just frozen for a little bit. 40 degree angle, switch my color, and then another 40 degree angle. Now we can get to the actual pyramid part. And I'm gonna go back in with the ruler. This time I'm going to make the angle 65. Because <laughs> it's my favorite number, apparently. Don't wanna make it too big or two um, long, but but we're going to use that tip as our center point for every angle. And then this one back here is a hidden line. I'm trying to get the hidden lines out of the way so that we don't really have to go back and adjust them later on. And then we have that one, and then this last one back over here. There we go. So you can see it's a little bit at an angle, I guess. Um, that's no problem. I will show you how you can adjust that. So, now that we've got that all figured out, done and dandy, we're going to take this lasso tool and I'm just going to tilt it just a bit so that it's more, it, it looks less lopsided, right? So we're just going to do that and easy, done, simple. Okay. And now let's go ahead and move into the wedge. So this wedge is kind of like the cube split in half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the cube first 
um, switch it up a bit, right? Um, but this wedge, this triangular prism, this cube, they all have the same concept to it. Um, and what that is, is it just takes one shape, puts it behind the other, and you connect the lines, right? Everyone knows how to draw a cube, right? Well, um, that what I'm going to do for this one is for the cube is I'm just going to draw these lines and they don't necessarily have to be perfectly equal. Um, just because we're just really trying to get a grasp of the concept more than the actual Okay, so what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to make diagonal lines back so that it's more accurate. And then from this line here, I'm going to make a straight line down. And then from here, go straight across, just like that. And that's not really how you would normally draw the... Um, the, the square, but um, that's how I'm going to do it right now, just to save us a little bit of time. Um, Mr. Lee was a professor <laughs> at university, the University of Houston, like a long time ago. So it's still really fresh on my mind. I'm like, wow, he was a professor. You know? um, so next, let's move on to the wedge. And it's got the same concept. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it a different way so that you don't have to constantly draw the same shape over and over again. So you take this and you make the first shape, right? So here I am making the first shape. Wow, this one was a perfect square. I'm very proud of myself. Um, so you're gonna take it, go like this. You're going to take the selection tool, select it, copy it, paste it, move it slightly behind okay let's space it out just a little more so that i can really show you um how we do it so then what i'm going to do i'm going to take the ruler again and i'm going to measure one endpoint to the next endpoint to get my edge just like that and all of these are at the same angle or slope uh, so you can just move it around, connect everything, the little connect the dots, right? So that's what you've got, but now it's just really a shape with, um, with a bunch of lines and you, it's kind of like an optical illusion. You don't know which way it's facing, right? And that's where the gray pen comes in. And I'm gonna make this slightly bigger than my original pen so that it covers more of the black. Oh, what just happened? Um, actually, we'll just go in and take it all the way through. Go in, take it all the way down. Oh, nope, I have, um, take your ruler again, bring it back, and hit it with that gray pin. it nice and precise so that all these black lines are hidden. Um, then we can go in with our black pen. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back over these at a diagonal angle. Um, and there you have our wedge. Yay! Um, so let's go ahead and do the exact same thing with our triangular prism. Now with the triangle, all the degrees in an equilateral triangle are 60. So that's kind of how you know that you're making a triangle right, right? Um, so let's go ahead and get at the bottom here. 
There we go. Bring it over, 60 degrees. Perfect. Bring it down. And then I'm going to take this out and create a horizontal line. Um, so this one, I'm not really a fan of the ruler just because it does take up so much work for me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and erase so that we can duplicate it. And it's just, to me, it's, it's a simpler way to go about this process. Um, and then copy, paste, move it back. There you go. So this just has the same concept as the cube, so we're just going to speed it up a little bit. And there we have our triangular prism. So now for this pentagonal prism, um, what I like to do is I like to draw a star. Not like that though. I like to take our stylus. Um, in this case, I'm gonna be using a the back of a pen and kind of just do it like that, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a layer to it. I'm going to get the red pen, make some really big points. I mean, they're not, Super big, but they'll do when I try and match them up. And then I'll go back in here, take my eraser, make it a bit bigger, and erase the star. And that's how I get the points for a pentagon. Um, just gonna make this a tiny bit smaller. And then what I do is I go in with my red, and because the layer the red dots on are not, they aren't, um, so that layer isn't selected at the moment, it's not going to draw on that, which is perfect, which is what we want, right? Wow, that is big. There we go. And these dots right here, I'm just going to match them up to the other dots so that we can do this spin and rotate. Just like so. And now I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, just adjust this last point. There we go. So now we can delete this. We can select this pentagon and make it more even because this angle was at five degrees, so we're going to shift it five degrees, right? That's how we do it. And then we're going to go in with our eraser and just clean up our corners. Yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back in with the lasso tool. We're going to make it a tad smaller, and we're just going to, once again, copy paste and move back like that. And merge those two layers, merge these layers, um, merge these layers so that they're all, they're all in one layer now. Because whenever you copy and paste something, it moves that part onto a different layer. Capiche? Um, so what I want to do is I want to go in and I want to erase all these hidden lines. Um, because they're not going to be there. They're not going to be here to see what's coming. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna keep this right there, that little point right there, just as a reference point for whenever we go back in and connect those points again, right? Um, so I don't wanna mess with that, but I'm going to go in and fill this in.
And now I'll go back in to draw the visible line. That's just how I wanted to do it for this pentagon, just because there are so many hidden lines. Um, but this is our last shape. Thank goodness. So I'm just going to take this moment and talk to you guys about our program again. <laughs> um, just because this is going to be our last shape because um, we do want to save the best parts of our program for whenever you are taking it. We don't want you to just watch it over YouTube, right? Um, so if you would like to strive for the isosahedron, um, but you're struggling with it or something, um, come to us. Go to our website at the bottom. I'm also going to link it in the description below. Contact us. Uh, go to our Instagram, Twitter, tweet about us, spread the word if you'd like to subscribe to us, comment down below what you would like to see from us next about our program. If you have any questions, I am going to post a Q&A on our Instagram just to see what you guys would like to hear about us, right? Um, if you don't know where we're located, we're located on Bunker Hill and Katy Freeway. For more information about our location, go ahead and head to our website and the contact tab, and then it's right in there. Um, we do offer summer camps and year-long classes. Our base fee is $120, and it goes up from that to about $695, but it's really just what kind of bundle package you would like to get. Um, but that's really all I have for you guys today. I just wanted to give you guys an intro on our program. Um, but so, as you can see here, I like to use this shapes list as a way to explain how we've set up our program. So as you can see, it goes from the top left down to the top right. Of course, this pentagonal prism looks a lot more complex and sophisticated as just this sphere, which is really just a circle, right? It's 2D, but we say it's 3D because we are trying to give you that illusion. But really, it's just a 2D circle. It's the easiest thing you can draw. It's a quick circle, right? And then the pentagonal prism has a lot more obstacles to it, right? You've really got to think deeply, how am I going to get all the sides to be equal, right? So that's how we've kind of laid out our program. We've made it where you start from very easy, very simple, very straightforward projects and learning techniques to more complex and in-depth and more professional, more real life based situations. And it's all about muscle memory, which is what we've implemented into our program. It's all about muscle memory. You go from a sphere and you take those concepts from the sphere and you apply it to the ellipses. You take the ellipses and the sphere concepts and you apply them to the hemisphere, right? And then it just all builds on top of one another. So that's how we have laid out our program for you. And I think that's the easiest way to go about teaching you guys this method of creating a tangible object from just your mind or from just a dream or an idea that really caught you. And it works for engineers, it works for architects, it works for graphic designers, for mathematicians, scientists, it works for manufacturers, anything you can think of, you start from the beginning and you work your way up, right? So that's how we've based it. And we want to start with shapes just because I want you to see how our professors start your sessions. This is what you're going to be doing whenever you come in for your two hour trial session with 3D CAD masters. And it's really to teach you about lifelong skills. You can't just jump into the isosahedron, right? That's impossible because you don't know how to get the angles right and how to get that triangle in the middle and then each and every triangle lopsided, right? It's just gonna end up one big, weirdly misshapen object that's no longer an isosahedron. It's just a lot of lines and a lot of shading, right? And this is to kind of grow your interest about our program. It's to see if you have what it takes to take a simple concept and apply it to the next thing instead of just taking a concept, memorizing it, applying it to that same project, and then storing it away forever. You're going to take each concept and apply it to every single thing for the whole entire pro program. And that's what 3D CAD Masters is all about. So I want to show you guys how to take it from a sphere and ellipses 
a wedge, a pyramid, a tetrahedron, an octahedron, a cube, like all these crazy types of shapes. And I want to teach you just a little bit about each and every little concept so that you can really get a full idea of it. And then in class, when you come in and you sign up at www.3cadmasters.com, which is in the bottom right corner at all times. See how I work that in there? Well, when you sign up and you come in or you log on to Zoom for your online classes, this is what you're going to be doing. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you next time at 3D CAD Masters. Bye.